Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for August 10th, 2011, and here is what's happening in the world of the automobile. For a number of months now, we've been reporting on how car sales in China have been soft. Well, in July, the numbers started looking better. The China Association of Automobile Manufacturers reports total vehicle sales were up 2.2% in July to just over 1.2 million units. But in India, Car sales fell for the first time in nearly two years, totaling just over 133,000 vehicles. Higher interest rates and fuel prices are largely to blame, along with Suzuki Maruti, the largest automaker in India, stopping production of the Swift hatchback to retool for a new model. Automakers believe India, with a population close to China's, could someday match the Chinese market. But as these figures show, China's car market is 10 times bigger than India's right now, and 10 times is a lot. And just to show you how important the global market is, General Motors says it expects sales in the Middle East to soar 22% this year. And amazingly, GM says Iraq is the fastest growing market in the region. GM says that outside of the BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, the Middle East is its seventh largest market in the world. But to put that in perspective, GM expects to sell about 150,000 vehicles in the Middle East this year, a little over one month's sales in India. Speaking of GM, it plans to chop the number of platforms that it uses globally in half. By 2018, it expects to build 90% of all its vehicles off 14 platforms. It currently has about 28. It also wants to cut its engine families in half. Here's some of my Autoline insight. When Jack Smith was CEO of GM in the mid-1990s, he embarked on a similar program to slash platforms and powertrain variants around the world. So it's kind of shocking to see that GM is still struggling to get this done. Hey, maybe they need to come up with a simple tagline to rally the troops behind the effort. They could call it One GM. Yesterday, the White House announced that the administration's head of manufacturing policy, Ron Bloom, will leave at the end of the month. Bloom was President Obama's car czar during the Chrysler and GM bankruptcies. He also played a major role in the new cafe targets. The White House says Bloom is leaving because, you guessed it, he wants to spend more time with his family. You know, I think that's become a code word for, I am so out of here. Unlike anti-lock brakes or center high-mounted stoplights, electronic stability control really works in the real world. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says ESC can significantly reduce traffic deaths, specifically by 18%, and the system cuts over all accidents by 6%. Statistically speaking, ADS and chimpsels have almost no impact on reducing accidents. And starting the 1st of September, all new vehicles in the United States must be equipped with ESC. As automakers struggle to come out with better batteries for electric cars, what if they were able to integrate supercapacitors into those batteries? Coming up next, we'll take a look at a Taiwanese company that is doing just that. Reducing exhaust emissions, airified diesel particulate filters, high filtration, low back pressure, Small package size, excellent durability. DowAerify.com. Earlier this year, I paid a visit to a Taiwanese company called Delta Electronics. It's working on all kinds of technology for electric cars, including combining advanced batteries with supercapacitors. In fact, the company's built its own extended range EV based on a BMW. I got a chance to speak with Bruce Chen, the chairman of Delta. And let's go to that interview right now. 
earlier you walked me through your showroom and you showed me how you're not only working on lithium ion batteries mm -hmm. but also super capacitors yes give me your vision of how that might be integrated into mm -hmm. an electric car or hybrid mm -hmm. because right now the one of the biggest problem for to to use the hybrid car or even uh, more difficult is a full battery car is a battery the power density and uh, uh, energy density is still too low. Another problem is when you fully discharge the battery, the life is really too short and too expensive. So we, we feel if we put the uh, battery together with the um, supercapacitor, can be charged more quickly and also can be, when you start a car, you need higher electricity. That can solve a lot of problems. So we, we start to develop our own supercapacitor as well as uh, some of the new battery area. So will we see this in five years, 10 years? How long do you think? Maybe less. Maybe less. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Well, Bruce Chang, thanks so much for taking Thank the you. time to talk My to me today. Very Thank much you. enjoy it. Thank you. Delta is also working on the power electronics, the motors, and charging stations for EVs. Hey, don't forget to join me and the auto extremist Peter DeLorenzo for AutoLine After Hours tomorrow night when our guest will be Ed Welburn, the Vice President of Global Design for General Motors. What are the latest design trends that he sees coming? We'll get him talking about that and answering your questions. So join us tomorrow night, won't you? And that wraps up today's report on the latest news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.